Punxsutawney Phil is easily the most famous groundhog in the world. Phil lives in the small U.S. town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, and is cared for by the townspeople. However, every February 2nd, Phil is placed in the ground at Cobbler's Knob, where he carries on a tradition that is over a hundred years old. Many people believe the length of the winter can be predicted on this day, called Groundhog Day. It is said that on this day, when Phil emerges from his hole, if he sees his shadow, there will be six more weeks of winter weather. If Phil does not see his shadow, spring will arrive early. Can the duration of winter really be predicted by a groundhog? Probably not, but the town has a great time celebrating this tradition. Coco was a famous gorilla who used human sign language. Coco was taught sign language by psychologist Penny Patterson when Coco was just a baby. Patterson was studying whether gorillas could be taught to communicate. Although the study was only supposed to last a couple of years, Patterson and Coco developed a lifelong bond and worked together ever since. Coco began by learning basic words like eat, drink, and more, and eventually learned abstract ideas such as love, jealous, and shame. It is believed that Coco could sign over 1,000 words and that she understood about 2,000 spoken words. Coco was also famous for having pet kittens. She was always extremely gentle and affectionate with her kittens. A mouser is a cat that is kept for the purpose of catching mice. In England, there has been a mouser at the Prime Minister's residence for centuries. The most popular of these cats was a stray named Humphrey, who, in 1989, was the first cat to receive the official title Chief Mouser to the Cabinet Office. His care cost £100 and was paid from the department's budget. It was said to be far cheaper than the fees previously paid to exterminators. Humphrey, who was beloved in the UK, retired in 1997. One day in 1969, John Rendell and Anthony Burke saw a real live lion cub in a London department store window. Feeling that a lion should not be kept this way, they bought him and took him home to live in Rendell's basement. The lion, whom they named Christian, is said to have been an affectionate and extremely cooperative cat who even used a giant kitty litter box. Christian was pampered. He was brought on drives, strolls through the neighborhood, and even to restaurants. But when Christian grew to almost 200 pounds, 90 kilograms, it was decided that he should be released into the wild. Christian was brought to Africa, where he adapted to life in the wild and eventually became the leader of a group of lions. A year later, Rendell and Burke traveled to Africa to say goodbye. They were warned that Christian would not remember them. However, when Christian saw his old friends, he ran towards them, stood on his back legs, and joyfully gave each of them a long and loving embrace. 